uh, we'll start today. So we're going to continue uh, this discussion about the musical secret recipe, the components uh, that make up the musical. And we were talking last time about opening numbers. Now, Pippin, uh, which was written uh, by Stephen Schwartz, the, uh, a major Broadway composer who's never won a Tony. Can you imagine? But in any event, uh, Bob Fosse uh, directed and choreographed this, and um, it did not get great, great, great reviews. It was the, the producers were trying to figure out how do we get the hippie audience back into the theaters, and they thought this anti-war musical would really be the thing. It did run for four years, uh, primarily based upon two things. Uh, one, uh, the, the fact that a TV commercial was used to promote the musical. It had never been done before. Uh, the fact that they used television, all 11 stations in New York at the time, uh, to run this thing continually all day long in commercials created a four-year run for it. Uh, it really had no plot. It was about uh, King Charlemagne's son, uh, who was tired of his father's antics and looking for his own place in the world. This is, I just want to make sure we haven't missed anything, this is the commercial. Here's a free minute from Pippin, Broadway's musical comedy sensation, directed by Bob Fosse. of Pippin live at the Imperial Theater without commercial interruption. Well, it's not an opening number, but that certainly got people into the audience. And this is the breathtaking opening number from Pippin, Magic to Do. <laughs> Join us, come and waste an hour or two. Ah, doodly do journey, journey to a spot exciting, mystic and exotic. Why journey through our anecdotic review? We've got magic to do just for you. We've got miracle plays to play. We've got parts to perform, hearts to warm, kings and things to take by storm as we go along our way. Study, battles, barbarous and bloody. So join us, sit where everybody can see. We've got magic to do just for you. We've got miracle plays to play. We've got hearts to perform, hearts to warm, kings and things to change by storm as we go along our way.
Fosse then put his charm into another opening number. Uh, and, you know, uh, Bob Fosse's style was slouch shoulders uh, and locked knees, and uh, he was pigeon-toed. He had terrible posture. And, and that's part of how he created his dances in his own image. And all that jazz. <laughs> Not at home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm afraid so, Roxy. Oh, Fred. Oh, Fred. Yeah. Nobody walks out on me. <laughs> sweetheart. Oh, don't sweetheart me, you son of a bitch. No. Oh, Roxy. No. God. Whoopee. Oh. Yes. Oh. I gotta pay. One of the great opening numbers, you know, and Chicago, when it opened in, in 1996, I'm sorry, when it opened in 1976, no one warmed up to it. And it really took the O.J. Simpson murders to reinvigorate Chicago. And now it's the longest running American musical uh, of all time. It's been running 25 years. Chorus Line, which opened at the same time as Chicago, certainly eclipsing it, uh, really captured the spirit of the Broadway musical theater audition. Uh, for those of you who were with me in London and we got to see a, 
uh, a stylized real audition where a director puts an actor through their paces, you certainly can understand where the opening of a chord is. Respected lies. artists within the profession, those who have to do what they live to do, go out on that stage and light up the sky. <laughs>
shows? No. Broadway shows? A uh, touring company. Okay. I'm eliminating now. When I call out your number, please form a line. Girls first. Number two. Number nine. Number ten. Number 23. Judy Turner. Right. 37. 149. 152. 179. Cassie. To the girls, thank you very much for coming. I'm sorry. Boys, number five. 17. 44. 45. 63. 67. 81. And 84. To the boys, thank you. Larry. your pictures and resumes, please. Such a fabulous opening. And, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but there are extra people around who don't get cast. And they all have to hang around for the whole show until the end. Um, they also were understudies and so forth. But, uh, you know, uh, and it's very difficult. And what you're about to see, what happens in the plot of A Chorus Line is really a callback. Where they're looking at the additional people, seeing who they're going to use and who they're not. Now going forward a bit to 42nd Street, uh, the the attempt to take the 42nd Street movie from the 1930s, turn it into a great big Broadway smash. Uh, and David Merrick really having bad behavior all around. Uh, Gower Champion, who was directing and choreographing this, had a rare blood disease, uh, dying on the morning of opening night. Uh, but that being an opening number of its own, sadly to say. And uh, David Merrick uh, used really bad behavior uh, called all 11 television stations in New York, kept Gower Champion's death a secret, not even the cast knew, until after the performance that night. And he told the television stations to bring television cameras to the opening night of 42nd Street to hear an announcement from the stage they've never heard before. Uh, using that, he thought, to create sympathy, publicity for the show, just in case it didn't get good reviews. Well, the reviews were phenomenal. And in the opening number of 42nd Street, you see everything you're coming to see. But there's an interesting moment. When it was at the Kennedy Center in tryouts, the curtain got stuck one day in rehearsal. And it was that getting stuck in rehearsal that then David Mayer, uh, the Gower champion, decided to let the curtain sit there for a moment so all you would see are the dancing feet. This is from the London production that he had to use and used beautifully all of the original Gower champion choreography. Oh,
come and meet those dancing feet on the avenue one taking you to 42nd street little nifties from the 50s in no sentence sexy ladies from the 80s who are in this free there side by side that glorified where the underworlds can meet the elite 40 Nothing better. Anyway, uh, Lacajo Fall had maybe one of the most startling opening numbers. And when Lacajo Fall was being written by Harvey Firestein with music uh, by Jerry Herman, uh, one of the concerns was how much would the audience tolerate? Uh, you know, it was the first time two gay men were at the center of the story. Uh, would, they, would the audience, uh, you know, accept that, which was very complicated? And they didn't even have the men touch each other. But here you go with the famous opening number uh, with the Kajel. <laughs>
what an opening number. And of course, the opening number has to set the tone uh, for what's to follow. Stephen Sondheim once said, even if you have a good opening number, the audience will tolerate you for 45 minutes before they realize they're in a clunker. Ragtime, the very, very large musical uh, that uh, about the sprawling novel of the turn of the century uh, dealings of uh, class and and so many things. Um, it's just a phenomenal opening again, setting the tone for what's to follow. In 1902, Father built a house at the crest of the Broadview Avenue Hill in New Rochelle, New York. And it seemed for some years thereafter that all the family's days would be warm and fair. It was only 1906! And there were 94 years to go! And there was music playing, catching a nation in its prime. Baker and millionaire, everyone everywhere, moving to the right size of the cast, but it was enormous. Uh, and on the right here, that is Brian Stokes Mitchell center stage, and to his left is uh, uh, Audra McDonald. Uh, both great performances that they gave. She won a Tony 
uh, for her portrayal, one of the six that she owns. The Book of Mormon, oh my God, of course. Uh, the Book of Mormon has one of the funniest opening numbers ever, and now all you have to do is play the doorbell and everybody knows uh, what you're talking about. My name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Hello, my name is Elder Grant. It's a book about America a long, long time ago. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much this book can change your life. Hello. My name is Elder Green. I would like to share with you this book of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Elder Young. Hello, did you know that Jesus lived here in the USA? You can read all about it now. Hello, in this nifty book it's free, no you don't have to pay. Hello, hello, my name is Elder Smith. And can I leave this book with you for you to just peruse? Hello! 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 I'll just leave it here. It has a lot of information you can really use. Hello! Hi! My name is Jesus Christ. You have a lovely home. Hello! It's an amazing book. Bonjour! Hola! Ni hao! Me llamo Elder White. Are these your kids? This book gives you the secret to eternal life. Sound good? Eternal life. Jesus Christ. It's super fun. Hello! No, no, Elder Cunningham, that's not how we do it. You're making things up again. Just stick to the approved dialogue. Elders, show it. Hello. Hello. My name is Elder Cunningham. And we would like to share with you this book of Jesus Christ. Hello. 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 Just take this book. It's free for you. Oh, you see, you simply won't believe how much this book will change your life, will change this book. Well, there's not much more you can say to that. It's really a great opening number, sets the tone for the satire of what's to follow. This is a fabulous clip. Uh, I don't want to say too much about it, but uh, it's going to speak for itself. We want to take you live to the White House, where earlier today, First Lady Michelle Obama hosted Broadway's Hamilton at the White House. You can see President Obama is now in front of a podium where he's about to introduce the cast. Let's listen in. After the curtain fell, so feeling a little deprived, uh, we invited the cast to perform today because we wanted to share this incredible musical with folks who might otherwise not get the experience. And I want to thank them so much, uh, the show's producers, for help helping to bring Hamilton to the White House. The truth is, though, they, they do owe me. <laughs> because seven years ago, Lin-Manuel Miranda came to the White House Poetry Jam. And he took the mic, and he announced that he and his musical collaborator, Alex Lackamore,
that they were going to perform a song from a hip-hop album they were working on, and I'm quoting him, about the life of somebody who embodies hip-hop, Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> and so we all started laughing, uh, but Lynn manuel was serious. And who's laughing now? <laughs> uh, having said that, not to take undue credit or anything, but this is definitely the room where it happened, right here. <laughs> this is it, right here. On this stage. Obviously, since that time, Hamilton has become a phenomenon, a smash hit, taken Broadway by storm, captivating the entire country, winning tons of awards, turned musical haters into diehard fans. It has become a favorite in the Obama household. That was the first lady. Hooting. Was that grandma who did it? In fact, Hamilton, I'm pretty sure, is the only thing that Dick Cheney and I agree on. <laughs> now, I'm trying not to get carried away when my Secretary of Health and Human Services challenged me to a rap battle. I had to draw the line. Uh, but this show brings unlikely folks together. Uh, and Lynn manuel if you have any ideas about a show about Congress, for example. <laughs> Now's your chance to help. <laughs> we can use the help. Uh, there is a reason why this has become a cultural phenomenon. Uh, in Ron Chernow's extraordinary biography of Alexander Hamilton, and uh, a great historian is here on at the front row. Um, uh, Lynn Manuel picked up this biography at the airport for some light beach reading. Uh, but he identified a quintessentially American story uh, in the character of Hamilton, a striving immigrant who escaped poverty, made his way to the new world, climbed to the top by sheer force of will and pluck and determination. Lynn manuel saw something of his own family uh, and every immigrant family. And in the Hamilton that Lynn manuel and his incredible cast and crew bring to life, a man who is just like his country, young, scrappy, and hungry. <laughs> we recognize the improbable story of America and the spirit that has sustained our nation for over 240 years. Now, in this telling, rap is the language of revolution. Hip-hop is the backbeat. In each brilliantly crafted song, we hear the debates that shaped our nation, and we hear the debates that are still shaping our nation. We feel the fierce, youthful energy that animated the men and women of Hamilton's generation, and with a cast as diverse as America itself, including the outstandingly talented women. <laughs> the show reminds us that this nation was built by more than just a few great men. Uh, and that it is an inheritance that belongs to all of us. And that's why Michelle and I wanted to bring this performance to the White House, because Hamilton is not just for people who can score a ticket to a pricey Broadway show. Uh, it is a story for all of us and about all of us. And so we are absolutely thrilled that the show's producers have been working with the New York Public Schools, the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, the Gilder uh, Lehrman Institute, to make sure that thousands of low-income students have the chance to see the show. Uh, there's now a curriculum to give students context and a deeper meaning, uh, a deeper understanding of our nation's founding. Uh, today, Michelle hosted a workshop for a group of area high school students with some of the cast members. Uh, I understand these young men, uh, people put on some pretty terrific performances of their own. <laughs> Look at this brother, he's all like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's good. I mean, you got to have confidence. 
what, what did Malia and Sasha say to me the other day? You gotta be your own number one fan. <laughs> He's obviously internalized that. <laughs> we did have, we did have uh, one rule, uh, which is no dueling on the nice furniture, some of which uh, is, is antique. Um, but the real heroes are the extraordinary educators and counselors and community members who pour their heart into their students and make learning come alive every single day. So I want to give all those educators, counselors, and community members who spent hours uh, and we hope and perpetually young in spirit. Let's get started. Enjoy the show. Dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence, impoverished and squalor. Grow up to be a hero and a scholar. The ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder by being a lot smarter by being a self starter by 14. They placed him in charge of a trading charter. And every day while slaves were being slaughtered and carted away across the waves, he struggled and kept his guard up. Inside, he was longing for something to be a part of. The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter. Then a hurricane came and devastation reigned. A man saw his future drip, dripping down the drain. But a pencil to his temple connected it to his brain. And he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his Pain. Well, the world got around and said, this kid is insane, man. Took up a collection just to send him to the mainland. Get your education, don't forget from whence you came. And the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. My name is Alexander Hamilton. And there's a million things I haven't done. But just you wait. Just you wait. When he was ten, his father split full of it, debt ridden. Two years later, see Alex and his mother bed ridden, half dead, sitting in their own sick percent hick. And Alex got better, but his mother went quick. Moved in with the cousin, the cousin committed suicide, left him with nothing but ruined pride. Something new inside a voice saying, Alex, you gotta, gotta fend for yourself. yourself. He started retreating and reading every treatise on the shelf. There would have been nothing left to do for someone less astute. He would have been dead or destitute without a sense of restitution. Started working, knocking for his late mother's landlord, trading sugar cane and rum and all the things he can't afford. Scamming for every Every book he can get his hands on Planning for the future See him now as he stands on the bow of a ship Headed for a new land In New York you can be a new man In New York you can be a new man In New York you can be a new man See if you can spot them. Another immigrant coming up from the bottom. His enemies destroyed his rep. America forgot him. We, we fought with him. him. Me, I died for him. Me, I trusted him. Me, I loved him. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. 
There's a million things I haven't done, but just you wait. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. It is such an incredible opening, and I wanted you to see it as it was done at the White House. I think it gives it an additional uh, poignancy. Uh, that is the original cast. Uh, 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 really, all of them, you know, Chris Reynolds, they're all uh, uh, now have gone on to other things, but you know, this is what they did first. Come From Away, uh, an imp and a musical that who would imagine uh, this would really capture everybody's imagination. Uh, the story of the 6,000 people that landed in Gander, Newfoundland uh, on 9-11. What's so interesting about it is uh, it's 20 actors that portray literally 60 people. It tells a story that is absolutely heartwarming, brilliant, tragic, uh, and uplifting all at the same time. When you walk out of Come From Away, uh, it's hard not to feel that the world is a wonderful place. Uh, this opening number sets the tone again, uh, as all good opening numbers must. In Madison Square Garden, I can be on Broadway, I can be an actor. To this... In there, I hey, well, it wasn't perfect, but they got it done with their hearts. They took these people in, made them feel comfortable. People from all over the world, they didn't judge them, they just took them in, and they're really good at happy hour. And so, they had happy hour every night for five nights, and through that, we have this wonderful play. And so, I'm here tonight to be able to introduce. Nominee, a Tony nominee, Jen Colello, and the cast come from away. On the northeast tip of North America, on an island called Newfoundland, there's an airport. It used to be one of the biggest airports in the world. And next to it is a town called Gander. Everybody knows everybody else. And everybody in this room has a story about how they started that day. Welcome to the rock if you come from away. Huh? You probably understand about a half of what we say. Yeah. They say no man's an island, but an island makes a man. Especially, Especially when, when one comes from one like Newfoundland. Welcome to the rock. That morning I'm in the classroom. It's our first day back and the school buses are on strike. So I'm covering for Annette, who's running late. Sorry, Beulah. How's the kids? Not exactly thrilled to be inside on such a gorgeous day. So I told them we'd only have a half day this morning, and they were quite pleased. Until I told them we'd have the other half in the afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the wildest weather that you've ever heard of. Where everyone is nicer, but it's never nice above. Welcome to the farthest place you'll get from Disneyland. Fish and chips and shipwrecks. This is Newfoundland. Welcome to the rock. I'm in my car. The kids cross Airport Boulevard to get to school. And that time of day, people are in a little bit of a rush to get to work and stuff. So normally I sit there and run my radar. <laughs> and if they're speeding, I'll stop them and write out a warning ticket. I'll write STHD. Slow the hell down. Welcome to the land where the winter tried to kill us and we said, we will not be killed. Welcome to the land where the water's trying to drop us and we said, we will not be drowned. Welcome to the land where we lost our loved ones and we said, we will still go on. Welcome to the land where the winds tried to blow and we said no. That morning I dropped my kids off at school and head to the SPCA where I'm greeted by my other kids, all barking and meowing for breakfast in a belly rub. Not that I'm complaining, I love them. But by the time feeding is done, I got to get back to pick up my human kids. So I take just one second for myself, and I'm sitting in my car. I'm in the staff room. I'm in the library. And, and I, I turn, turn on the radio. radio. I'm running my radar when Bonnie comes by. She pulls off, and she's waving at me like mad. So I roll down my window, and she says, Oz, turn on the radio. Throw it down, Bonnie. Oz, turn on your radio. You are here at the start. Atlantic, on an island in between. I, 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 I,
It's amazing how simplicity works. A set with trees and chairs and a fabulous script and an Irish jigs kind of a score. It is just such a, a great event. I know many of you have seen this with me. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, it truly is something, something, something to see. Uh, Come From Away is brilliant storytelling and it's amazing uh, what it really means. Um, so we're really at the end of the opening numbers, and uh, next time we're going to start with the I Want songs. Rather than to do something that's a little fractured, I think I'll save that for next week. Uh, and I'll stop to share now, and you know we can have any questions you all might want. I noticed somebody had something in the chat a little earlier, um, uh, but in any event, that's fine. So um, let me unmute... Uh, So anybody can ask me anything they want. You've all now just been uh, unmuted. Uh, anybody can talk. Now, just, you know, again, I was talking a little earlier. I saw, uh, thank you very much, Gina, for your feedback there. Uh, I did see uh, a strange loop this week, and uh, it really is. You know, it's the story of a, an obese gay man trying to find his place in the world. The language is absolutely off the charts uh, difficult. And I don't mean, uh, hard, well, you know, they use every nasty word you can think of. Uh, and it's really bu brilliant storytelling. I don't know if everybody would love it. Uh, it's certainly uh, the fact that musical theater can now tell stories almost any way they want. Uh, and it does appear that it will probably win uh, the Tony this year. Uh, the rumor, I sent out yesterday the uh, article about who they think is going to win and so forth. So it's going to be interesting to see how all that uh, plays out. Anybody have any questions for me or anything you'd like to know? Nobody's asking me a thing. Well, wow. so put the weekend of October 1st on your calendar. Uh, if you're interested in doing a New York weekend trip, we're going to have two really great shows to go see, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun for everybody. Um, and thank you for everybody uh, that comes on Friday mornings. I looked today, there are about 100 people that watched the video over the week. Uh, that missed it last week. So you stalwarts that come on Friday morning, it means a lot to me that you're here. So talk to you all soon, and uh, see you all next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh, let me say a thing about next week. Um, I, I'm going to be really honest. I have family who are coming to the United States from Australia. They've never been to Washington, and I have volunteered to be their tour guide. So I will probably send out a program for you to watch uh, Friday morning if I do end up being the tour guide in the morning. So one way or the other, you'll either get me live or you'll get something. So uh, see you all next week and uh, talk to you all soon. Thank Take you, care. Bye-bye, everybody.